Hey, let's have a chat with Joe Rukin. Joe Rukin is the, one of the main campaigners against HS2. There's been some news on HS2 over uh, the last few days. The big gaffer of it, Simon Kerb, is it Simon Kirby? Yeah, has left the project. He was on seven hundred and fifty grand a year. Nice money if you can get it. Joe Rukin joins us. Hello, Joe. Morning, John. Good morning. Why did he, or why is he, leaving, and what's the significance? Well, he's jumped before, you know, the true mess that he's presided over is realised, because he was brought in, he was going to bring it in on time and on budget, and guess what? The budget's gone skywards, and uh, it's got continually delayed. And this is exactly, exactly what he did when he was in charge of Network Rail. He jumped, he came across to HS2, and then a couple of months after he left Network Rail, he said, oh, is everything late and uh, and well over budget? Oh, yes, so it is. And... uh, at the time, Patrick McLaughlin, when he was Transport Secretary, ended up pausing a load of the projects because to see if they could actually afford them and see if they were deliverable. And they're still going ahead with them now, but they're late and they're well over budget. And this is the same thing that's going to happen with HS2. And we've just found out that uh, a couple of months ago, w- it was revealed that Jeremy Haywood, the country's li- leading civil servant, he was doing a, a, a report into HS2, see if it was feasible, see what was available sorry, see if the timescales were doable, see where the costs were sure. going. And guess what? It's due out tomorrow. And, and Kirby quit at the weekend just before, you know, basically yeah. this report is published. And all, all of a sudden, his position would have been untenable. But tomorrow, government, yeah, but government, yes, yeah, so it have probably got the bullet then. But government are saying they're pressing ahead with this project. It makes not a blind bit of difference. And they'll start uh, demolishing the houses very, very soon. Well, it is absolutely bonkers, really. We did think that, you know, when Cameron went and Osborne went, that they have been cheerleaders for this. They have been pushing for it. There would be a proper review. They would look into this and see, you know what, it's not worth it. It's, it's not going to deliver on its promises. And uh, we will wait and see because I, I don't know. No one really knows what tomorrow's report is going to say. It looks like Jeremy Haywood was actually looking at lopping more bits off it. And you've got to remember that it was meant to connect to Heathrow Airport, and that was got rid of. It was meant to connect to HS1 and the Channel Tunnel, and that bit was got rid of, which you've got to think is absolutely bonkers. Are we building a high-speed railway? Shall we connect it up with the other one? Nah, everyone can walk from Euston to St Pancras. That'll that'll be fine. Uh, And we're thinking that more bits are going to go maybe tomorrow. And What's the reason? You tell me. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. What's the reason why it needs to be scrapped? Oh, well, <laughs> where do I start? Basically, you look at the cost for a start. It started off at $33 billion. The official cost is now 56 almost double that. But uh, in reality, it's, it's higher. You're looking at probably £80 billion minimum uh, as things stand. And that's with a lot of the cost not added in because they haven't done surveys on the ground conditions in the you know, former mining areas in Yorkshire and the East Midlands, which we know are completely unstable. Uh, it's not going to deliver on capacity. Well, it's not going to do. It's going to deliver some capacity, but not where it's needed. You know, you look at Euston. It's the second quietest London terminus, and the quietest one, oddly enough, is St Pancras, where HS1 goes to. So you're adding capacity, but you're not adding capacity where it's needed. The rail network is going to be starved of in the rest of the rail network, I should say, is going to be starved of investment while HS2 is going ahead. You're going to mess up Euston for 20 years. Um, it's massively environmentally damaging, whether you look at the impact on the local environment, because it's got to go pretty straight, so it's taking out almost 100 ancient woodlands, but also in terms of carbon, because you're going that fast, you're using far more electricity than you would do for a normal mm. high-speed train, because this is, this is ultra-high speed. This isn't high, we have high-speed railways in this country. They're called the West Coast Main Line, the East Coast Main Line. You know, we, yeah, it goes pretty got, fast. Oh, I get it from Coventry now to London in 58 minutes. So it doesn't really need to be much faster for me, as far as I'm concerned. By the time yeah, you've sat it. down, had a fart, had a cup of coffee, you're there, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, you get to a point where a journey's that fast, it's not worth getting out of your laptop. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, if, if you're talking about three quarters now, London to Birmingham... What's what's you know what's the point of doing the work? Um, the thing a lot of people say that the most beneficial time that they have for working is when they're on trains because they don't have the distractions. 
of the office. But can, can politicians get on with what they need to get on with? Do you feel politicians can actually be brave enough to scrap something of this magnitude? Well, this is the problem now that you know you've got all this movement built up behind hs2 it's become totemic it's an iconic project and it will be embarrassing to cancel it It will be difficult to cancel it and that's really the only reason that it's still at this stage because every independent body that's looked at it has absolutely slated that you had the the lord's economic affairs committee just last week saying that uh you know it should be paused it should you know you should stop and have a look at it the adam smith institute again last week said that it was you know not nonsense it was economically irresponsible was uh, what that think tank said um and parliamentary bodies economic think tanks they've all come out and basically the only people who said hs2 was any good are the people who've been paid to say it like you know KPM, <laughs> kpmg were given quarter of a million quid to come up with this to invent a brand new untested methodology that said oh yeah yeah milk and honey will rain from the sky everywhere if hs2 is built and it was just um, the, all the economists okay. said okay. this has been completely made up and that's the problem that they're willing to completely make up anything to try and justify this thing because it's embar- it'd be embarrassing to cancel it now and that's the only thing that's keeping it alive